Hey everybody, Jared with Second Life Design. Welcome to Milling Monday. This is a weekly thing I'm gonna do where I'm answering milling questions. I get inundated with questions and sometimes I feel like I wanna give more information than I have time to allow in typing. So I'm gonna start putting them out online as a vlog every week and hopefully that'll help everybody out. Um, I am a, for those that don't know, I'm a woodworker, chainsaw miller, uh, Central Illinois. I'm a Granberg ambassador, so I rock Granberg gear pretty heavy. I like all their products and I do a lot of chainsaw milling. If you follow me on social media, I do a lot of milling and I really enjoy it. I like saving big logs. So let's get right into it and hopefully this will help some people out. This question is from Sunny off of Instagram. I'm finally ready to get into milling my own logs. Any suggestions where to start? I've never run a chainsaw, but I want to get one in an Alaskan mill. Is there an ideal size? What's too big? What's too small? Etc. Um, not running a chainsaw before can be a little daunting to somebody if they've never, even a small one, it seems kind of like an unnatural tool. It's a gas engine turning a big chain and you know, that can be a little daunting to somebody. I would suggest getting some time in, you know, cutting some trees up or get cutting some limbs down something to get some time on a chainsaw before just d jumping right into milling um, that, it's just a safety thing it's a comfort thing you need to kind of learn good tendencies on what to do sh when different things happen and that only comes from experience so I, I don't want to speak too much of the safety part of it um, uh, that's you know at your own risk you know the, anything to do with a power tool chainsaw is is going to be dangerous. There's no, there's no way around it. So you, there's things you can do to mitigate it. Overall, I found it to be a really safe experience, but there's also, it's, it is what it is. So I would um, urge getting some experience doing non-milling things first and starting with that part. So all that stuff said, getting into milling, getting started, I would kind of, kind of, I would Try and isolate what type of woodworking you want to do, what you want to do. Um, when I started, I wanted to do slab tables. You know, it started out as, you know, kind of two board slab tables, you know, where you have two slabs together that are, you know, the two slabs would be 20 inches wide to make a 40 inch wide table. That's what I wanted to get to. I kind of gradually gravitated to where I want to do single slab tables. And that's where I'm at now, where I want to do tables that are, you know, I want to get slabs that are 40 inches and above that's what I'd like to have my own supply. So that dictates the where to start with the milling. If you want to do, if you are okay with smaller boards that are the 16, 18 inches wide, you could get by with a 24 inch bar on a smaller chainsaw and you would be okay. So, you know, it, it, it's a bigger question of what kind of, what do you want from it? Um, if you want to get it, if you want to go whole hog and start making slab tables, I would recommend getting a, something with at least a 36 inch bar. That's going to put you in the 60 cc plus uh, engine category. And you know, you can wrap up a lot of money in that quick. So there's a lot to consider that goes beyond this. Um, I always urge people to go bigger than you think that go bigger with your engine than an engine and bar than you think you will. Um, inherently you will always find bigger logs than what you, you think you'll start out with you know the i'll start out i'll go off 20 inch logs only and nothing bigger than that i don't need anything bigger than that and then you'll find a 24 inch log or you'll find a 27 or you'll have something nice has a nice crotch to it but it's really wide you, you, every whenever you can it, as much as your budget will allow go as big as you can you know i think there's a point where you need to kind of shut it off and be realistic about what you're doing but also it's not hard to find logs. You know, finding logs is pretty straightforward. Yeah, once you you put it out on social media, people start seeing you're doing the chainsaw milling. You'll get calls. You'll get emails. It it happens kind of naturally. So, wouldn't worry about that part. Um, other things to consider when getting started is where to store everything. You know, there's if you're starting out, you're going to be air drying things probably. As you can see behind me, mine are in my driveway. I don't have a ton of space and I let everything dry outside in the air. It takes a long time. So that's something to consider also, the space constraints of what you have. If you're more in an urban environment, you may not have as much space afforded to you, you're gonna have to get creative. You're gonna have to talk to buddies who have backyards or space in their garage, under the stairs somewhere, 
I, I don't know. It's that, so that's the immediate thing that is gonna it's gonna seem like it's hampering you, but it's really just kind of the process. Once you get started, it's it's an addiction. There's anybody who's who does chainsaw milling will tell you. You're starting out getting one or two logs, and then you got five or six of them stacked up, and you got slabs everywhere, and you don't know what to do. Find a place to store them. Uh, you know that's the best as far as storing them. You know, find a place and forget about them for a year and a half. Just let them sit, let them air dry, let them chill out. Um, yeah, get some space. You're gonna need it. You know, as the things gravitate, you will find logs, no problem. So that's in a nutshell, in a smaller way. That's what I can tell you how to get started. You know, where to kind of dial in your woodworking style, what you're looking for, and then start getting some space. You're going to need it. Uh, I, I need space myself. So that's, that's what I got for today, guys. Really quick, really simple. I want to give a better kind of in-person explanation, as if you were standing across from me asking a question. So that's Milling Monday. Uh, subscribe. Check it out next week. And hope everybody has a good night. Thanks.